Hey everybody, this is Emily with Snake Discovery and today we're going to be talking about deformations in amphibians. Back in 1995, a middle school biology class took a field trip to a pond in Minnesota actually, where I'm from, and they discovered a deformed frog. They reported this frog to the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and that was one of the first known um, cases of a deformed frog and the agency went out and discovered that 30 to 40 percent of the frogs in that pond had other deformities to them. So this made national news and reports of other deformed uh, amphibians came flooding in. In most recent years, the reports of deformed frogs and salamanders have really started to increase. So today we're going to talk about the most common deformities seen in amphibians like salamanders or frogs and toads. We're also going to talk about the main causes for these deformities and finally how you can help the amphibians near your house and help them prevent getting such deformities. The most common types of malformations or deformities or abnormalities, there's debate on what term should be used, so they're kind of used interchangeably right now, and I'll kind of use all three of those terms interchangeably throughout the video. But the three most common types of abnormalities seen in amphibians are lack of limbs, extra limbs, and facial deformities. This is an example of a, uh, an amphibian with a deformity in his leg. This is my tiger salamander, Thomas, and when I got him, he had just recently been attacked by a predator that tore off his front left leg, and all that was left was just a little bone that was literally sticking out of his body. And over the course of about three months, he completely regrew that limb, but it still does look a little bit different than it originally did. It's a lot smaller than the original leg. That doesn't stop him, however. He still walks just as well as normal salamanders do. He has a huge appetite. He's done very well. I bet he'd try to eat my finger here. Yep, he's always hungry. In salamanders, another abnormality that's commonly seen are gill deformities in their larval phase. Here's an example of an amphibian with a facial deformity. This is one of my newer amphibians, actually the newest amphibian of mine. This is One-Eyed Willie. He has, he was found by one of my neighbors and he is missing his left eye. Uh, we don't know exactly what caused it because it was already healed over by the time she found him, but he still hangs in there as well and it, it's a little tougher for him to hunt for his food, but he manages. We have decided to keep him in captivity though because there's a good chance he wouldn't get enough food in the wild. He might, but we feel like he has better odds of survival in captivity. Although we don't know exactly what happened to this little toad's eye, we do know that there are four main causes for deformities in amphibians. Those are predation, parasites, nutritional deficiencies, and contamination or pollution. Deformities occur when cells interact with each other during development of tissue in a way that they're not supposed to. It could also be from the wrong types of cells interacting with each other. Frog and toad malformations often are a result of environmental factors affecting these animals when they are still in their tadpole phase. Anurans, or frogs and toads, experience regenerative decline, which means that as tadpoles, they can regrow their legs, they can regrow their tails, even their eyes, but as they age and get closer to becoming an adult like this toad here, they lose the ability to regenerate that tissue. So that's why predatory attacks are very variable in the long-lasting effects of toads and frogs. Not only does their regenerative ability depend on how serious of an attack from a predator they get, but it also depends on what stage of life they're at. If they are a fresh young tadpole and they get attacked by a predator, chances are they're gonna regrow things just fine, they'll regenerate limbs, they'll regenerate eyes, and you might not even be able to tell that they were attacked when they were so young. However, if they are an older tadpole that has already developed a couple of its legs, they might have permanent lifelong deformities as a result of not being able to regenerate as well as they would have if they were a bit younger. And once they morph into adult frogs and toads like this, they cannot regenerate their limbs anymore. Although amphibians are covered in living cells, unlike we are, we're covered in dead cells. So we don't heal up from like 
wounds as well, and we show scarring. Whereas amphibians, since they're covered in living cells, even though the frogs and toads can't regrow their limbs as adults, they can cover up injuries very well to the point where there's like no scarring afterwards. So it might look like they were just not even born or hatched with a certain leg, even though it was really predated but just healed up really well. Since frogs and toads grow their hind legs first, they are exposed for a longer amount of time to predators when they're in their tadpole phase. And therefore, frogs and toads are more likely to have injuries and deformities in their hind legs than their front. And there's something called selective predation, where predators that these frogs and toads would encounter in the wild as tadpoles, these predators aren't big enough to eat the entire tadpole, so they just eat pieces of the tadpole, specifically legs and maybe tails. And one example of such a predator are dragonfly nymphs. Dragonflies eat all sorts of things, especially when they are nymphs, when they're still living in the water. And they seem to target the hind legs, or just legs in general, of frogs and toad tadpoles. Other predators that these guys will encounter as tadpoles include leeches and fish, maybe some crustaceans, and even other tadpoles. Larger species of frogs and toads as tadpoles will often attack or completely eat smaller tadpoles. And again, depending on the extent of the injury and when they were attacked or when a limb was bitten off by a predator, they might have lifelong deformities as a result. The second cause to abnormalities seen in amphibians are parasites. And this is specifically to frogs and toads. I don't know if this parasite has been seen in salamanders too, but there's a parasite out there. It's in the phylum platyhelminthes, which is uh, basically flatworms. Platyhelminthes contains two types of parasitic flatworms that we refer to as flukes. These flukes start their life cycle inside of ram's horn snails, which are a freshwater, underwater species of snail, where the flukes then reproduce they lay their eggs, the eggs hatch into free swimming larvae, and then come out of the snail. Instead of the snail laying eggs, it lays these living free swimming larvae of fluke, and they swim in the water and they find tadpoles. They find frogs and toads, they swim through, they actually penetrate through the skin of the tadpole, and they target with extremely good accuracy the limb buds of these tadpoles, which is basically the, the bud from which a limb will grow. And these flukes inside of the limb buds will cause legs to grow up and outwards in weird directions and they'll grow extra legs from where they where these flukes are and this causes the tadpole when it morphs into a frog to not be able to move so these frogs are immobilized because of all these weird legs caused by the fluke and birds eat them they're perfect prey for birds so they get eaten up these frogs get eaten up by birds and that's what the fluke wants that's what this parasitic flatworm is going for they use birds as a host to reproduce in and then their eggs are pass through the feces of birds back into the water, they find their way to snails, and the whole cycle starts over again. So parasites, especially the species of um, parasitic flatworm or fluke, can cause deformities in amphibians as well. The third cause for deformities seen in amphibians is from uh, nutritional deficiencies. So a very common nutritional deficiency seen in amphibians is lack of calcium. Now this causes their bones not to mineralize properly and it results in metabolic bone disease. If, you, if you're familiar with reptiles and you've seen it before, me metabolic bone disease or MBD for short is kind of an umbrella term for all sorts of issues that stem from the bones. The bones, there's something wrong with their bones. In the case of amphibians, MBD causes them to have poor posture or they're not able to walk properly or you may even see uh, issues in their jaw structure. It looks like they have an underbite or an overbite. That's another example of MBD. Unfortunately, if an amphibian has MBD due to lack of calcium, there's no way to cure it. You can only prevent it from getting worse by adding calcium and proper amounts of calcium back into their diet. More often seen in frogs and toads would be a lack of vitamin A, which can cause mouth deformities. Lack of vitamin A or hypovitaminosis A. Hypervitaminosis means there's too much of the vitamin. Hypovitaminosis means there's not enough, so a lack of. So hypovitaminosis A can cause frogs and toads to lose mucousy cells on their tongue so their tongue doesn't stick to prey items as well as it should and therefore they have a tougher time catching their prey. This is often called short tongue syndrome in frogs and toads. This can be cured as long as the case isn't too serious enough or you catch it soon enough by just adding vitamin A in proper amounts 
back into their diet. But they might have to be force fed or assist fed for a while until those mucus cells can redevelop. This, by the way, is not a deformed frog. This is Ed's pixie frog. Uh, they're also the African, giant African bullfrog. Her name is Hypno, because she looks like Hypno Toad. And she makes me nervous sometimes because they have teeth and she has a huge appetite and fingers sometimes look like food. So, oh, she's nestling down. But she's so fat and squishy, she's so cute too. Thank you for just licking me there. The most common and the most serious cause for deformities in amphibians is pollution or contaminants in their environments. Similar to chemical induced birth defects in humans, amphibians, since they have such sensitive skin, since it's living tissue covering their whole body, that means amphibians are more sensitive to diseases and pollution, toxic chemicals, UV radiation, and basically human induced environmental damage heavily impacts their health. It has been proven time and time again that habitats of poor quality have high percentages of deformed amphibians that live within it, whereas clean habitats or habitats of a good quality have much fewer deformed amphibians inside. So there is a direct negative correlation between habitat quality and deformities in its amphibians. Since so many abnormalities in amphibians are caused by human-induced environmental damage, there's a lot of ways you can help prevent amphibians from becoming deformed just by increasing the quality of their environment. First and foremost, if you see a deformed amphibian in the wild, it's important to report it. And there is a quick, easy way to report it. Take a picture of it so that the um, agency can keep track of what types of deformities are out there. But I'll put a link to the agency you can report deformed amphibian sightings to in the description below. The next thing you should do is try to not use chemicals on your lawns or on the plants around your house. A lot of us use fertilizers and pesticides or weed killers on the plants surrounding our houses and those toxic chemicals seep through the soil and they poison our amphibian friends. Since they have such sensitive skin that absorbs water through it, that's how they drink, they absorb the chemicals too and they literally do die from it. They become poisoned and they die. So try to use fewer chemicals, if any at all, on the plants around your house. The best thing to do when it comes to weeds is just pull them by hand. For me, I like pulling weeds by hand uh, around my house because it gives me an excuse to be outside and in the sun. It's kind of a nuisance, but I mean, it's better than using chemicals. And it also allows me to collect earthworms from my yard or on my driveway because I know no chemicals have been used around it so I can collect earthworms for free to feed my salamanders. So it's free food that isn't gonna be toxic. Another very important thing you can do at home to help amphibians in the wild is to keep any bodies of water around you clean. If you see any trash by a pond by your house or by a lake or a stream or any source of water, if you see trash, clean it up and dispose of it properly because you'd be amazed at how many toxic chemicals drain from trash that's just tossed aside and goes into the waterways and then poisons and kills amphibians or causes further deformities in them. So do the right thing if you're outside and you see litter outside, dispose of it properly instead of letting it sit there contaminating the environment around it. Now, sometimes, like with any animal, birth defects just happen. It could be genetic, it could be from just random happenstance. This is our rescued albino Pac-Man frog is the common name, but technically it's the South American horned frog. And she was born with an issue with her spine that causes her to kind of move in circles and look upwards. She seems fine otherwise and has a big appetite just like they always do. And she's grow. hey, don't bite me. Ah, let go. Your frog is biting me. Okay, got her off. She is angry right now. She's, this is her first time on camera. She actually squeaked there. Uh, but uh, this is an, an example of something that was raised in a healthy environment that still has a deformity just from random happenstance. So just like with any species of organism, deformities can be random and not necessarily caused by the environment around them. But that covers the morphological abnormalities seen in amphibians and what causes these deformities, as well as what you can do at home to prevent amphibians in your area from succumbing to the same fate many others have died from due to pollution or other environmental factors. So I hope you learned something new today. I do want to thank our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. Uh, you guys have allowed us to take in rescues like this, this cute little spinny albino horned frog. She was 
was actually given to us by a friend of ours who bought a large group of horned frogs from a breeder so that she could resell them at a local expo. And this girl was special needs, so she wasn't able to sell her, so we decided to adopt her. So thank you guys for uh, allowing us this opportunity to have a new rescue in our hands. Thank you everybody for watching as well, and I'll put my works cited or all the literature that I got today's information from in the description as well in case you want to reference that or learn more. Thank you everybody, and we'll see you next time. Wow, he is very hungry today. She's trying to eat my fingers, Ed. Yeah. I felt her tongue. She like licked it. I'm just glad she didn't pull it into her mouth. Never mind, she likes that. Oh my gosh, she ate it so quickly. <laughs> She's got good accuracy too. Yeah, she does. She was actually just, oh, you were trying to eat me. Oh, oh. Oh, you're done, Roach. Oh no. Oh. oh, she flipped it somehow. Wow, that was cool. Hey, don't bite me. Oh, I'd rather take her bite than the pixie frog, though. <laughs>